Hey folks, thanks for staying with the video. I thought I'd uh, offer some thoughts uh, on this guitar. Uh, I saw this for sale on Reverb. These guitars very rarely uh, crop up and when they do they get snapped up really really quickly because they were only made really for um, uh, one year from April 93 to 94 uh, by Yamaha. And I've always had this kind of mad idea that it'd be the perfect guitar for the kind of uh, rock Kelly depth stuff that I do, which is a bit of a crazy reason for kind of wanting a guitar, but it's such a iconic kind of guitar in my memory because I'm of a certain age that back in the day you would basically see blue Saraceno ads in the magazines all the time uh, with his own uh, kind of custom made uh, version of this, and then Yamaha released this one basically as a kind of production model. Uh, based on his custom model. And the things that are different between the, the guitars that he actually played, uh, they were older body, there was a different kind of heel joint. I'm sure he had like an original Floyd on them, and of course, uh, with his uh, endorsement with Seymour Duncan, he had his trimburkers and stuff in there for that kind of uh, hollowed out kind of blues, sort of, you know, kind of tone. So this guitar was kind of a adaptation of the kind of RGX line that Yamaha were already running in the 90s. Basically it's like them with a couple of little tweaks and then this kind of played pattern put on it or plaid if you're in the States. And I think this is actually just a vinyl print. You can see it's just on the top. If you ever see Blue Siren Zeno guitars you'll notice he's got it all over and it was a custom kind of uh, paint design on his. Um, but I think this is just a vinyl sticker on top and then lacquered, you know. Uh, but it looks cool, it looks really cool. You get green markers to match it there, and of course you get the reverse headstock that you saw on the uh, kind of reverse headstock line of the Yamaha, the Yamaha guitars, and the big massive logo, of course, just in case you didn't notice it was a Yamaha guitar. So quality-wise, again, it's one of these 90s made Japanese guitars, I mentioned that in the Charvo Model 2 video. Really well made, really solid. I think your Ibanez guitars from back in those days, you know, great guitars basically, really well made. The neck feels really nice. Obviously it's a good age now, uh, but the fretwear wasn't too bad. Big fat frets as always, as I love. And the neck feels, it's quite slim, it's kind of like a C shape, so it doesn't really have any kind of D shape kind of shoulder on it. So it's got more of that kind of C shape vibe and it's nice and kind of slim, really nice uh, kind of feel to it. How about wise, it's uh, Takeuchi Trem, it's on here. So these Japanese made trims, um, this is a TRS Pro. They made basically trims for like Ibanez, uh, Fernandez, Washburn kind of guitars. So they're not like the lower quality alloy TRS trims that you, you know, you got in some Ibanez that were well and truly bashed back in the day. These are slightly bit upgrade from that, and the you got a solid kind of base plate on there and solid posts. I think the alloy is really just on the saddles. Tuning stability is a little bit out, and I think that's just from wear on the posts. So I've actually sourced some trim posts uh, from a Wilkinson trim because this is an M6 thread in here, it's a kind of narrow one. So I'm going to swap these out and see if it helps with the stability. But overall, I mean, it's not really out stability wise, but there's definitely a little bit of kind of wear on the posts there. Uh, pickups are the Yamaha own, but there's a little bit of confusion online with this. The brochures back in the day will say they're USA uh, designed, maybe even USA made, but I didn't see any confirmation to say they were the Marzio conjunction with them, but you see some people talk about that. But they are actually great pickups. Uh, I would imagine they were probably voiced a little bit to try and match uh, Sarancino's Trembucker sound, uh, but they are really, really good. Yeah. Bridge pickups got a really nice kind of sound to it. The only issue I have, of course, and you probably saw in the demo, the volume control, um, it, it doesn't really do much. Uh, and conjunction with the neck pickup, it's, it's a limited kind of sound. Now that's great for Blue Sarancino, obviously he's got a whole range of tones just with three, you know, three-way switch and two humbuckers. But I like to kind of have that kind of spankier sound in the neck. So because I'm using the live in that kind of context, what I'm going to do is I'll swap out that neck humbucker and I've got a bare knuckle true grit to put in there and I'll put a push-pull coil, coil split in there. I'll just leave the three-way as it is. And that way I can get a little kind of single coil sound on there and I'll put a treble bleed in as well so I can roll off. Another cool thing about this compared to kind of your standard locking system is the nut on the Yamaha guitar has got height adjustable Allen bolts in it so it actually sits in a little plate 
and you can adjust the height of uh, your action at the nut, which is really, really cool. I've not uh, touched it yet. When the guitar arrived, it had ridiculously low action, so I only raised up the bridge, but I just left the nut as is, and it's perfectly fine. On the back, of course, another kind of Yamaha-specific thing is the super playability system. Um, basically, you know, instead of having a curve here, or, you know, we've got a stepped kind of thing, and then we've got this split uh, with the four bolts, which is a kind of interesting design. But it works pretty well. Um, I mean, the, the width of that bit of wood there might be a cause for concern if, with the kind of strength of it, but it seems okay so far. There's a couple of little finish cracks there, but there's no cracks in the actual pocket. Uh, but access-wise, I've never really been too bothered on 22 fret guitars. Even on a Les Paul, you can kind of get up there a little bit. But it, it's quite comfortable. You can get up there. I've also got a slight angle jack here, rather than just kind of sticking at the bottom. Not quite like a gem where you come in at an angle, but it's a little bit of an angle there, which is quite a nice touch as well. Definitely an eye-catching finish. It's, not, it's one of these finishes that uh, I guess you either love it or you hate it. Uh, I remember seeing, uh, I went to the like, uh, guitar show in Glasgow a long, long, long time ago. You're talking probably 92, 3 ish or something like that. I'd only started playing. And Blues uh, Saraceno was there and he was doing his demo and stuff. And I remember just, um, obviously, you get heckled because it was a Glasgow crowd and he walks out with a guitar like this. But uh, I remember being blown away just because the fact he had a guitar like this. It really made him stand out, I guess, in the crowd. Uh, plus, he had a unique, still does, I guess, way of playing. He wasn't kind of shredding all over the place, he was more kind of real uh, ridiculous wide vibrato, kind of real gutsy kind of blues rock kind of playing. So it's always kind of stuck in my mind, this guitar, uh, and I'm pretty chuffed uh, to find my own one. So as usual, if you like the video, please give it a like, give it a share if you want. Um, also, uh, check out Master the Guitar on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. Uh, if you're interested in uh, basically a jam track version of the demo tune that I've done, you can check out Massive Guitar on Patreon. You'll have, uh, that'll be available too, basically, if you're one of the patrons there. And I want to say a huge thanks to Dave Bronze for the loan of his Dirty Boy pedal uh, to get the tones in this video. I was going to create a Helix patch, but then Dave kindly offered a loan of that pedal and I said, yes, yes, please. So I used that... Um, for this video to get some closer to those kind of blue Saraceno tones with my, you know, mere mortal fingers. But uh, a huge thanks to Dave for that. Dave's an amazing player. Uh, I'm going to provide a link there to go and check out his stuff and check out his recent album, which is amazing. It's one of my favourite albums of the year so far. Uh, so huge thanks to Dave for that. And uh, of course, we're all living in pretty interesting, uh, challenging times at the moment. So I hope all you guys... Uh, stay safe out there and stay well. But as usual, have fun.